Hey, I'm Julie Tam, Managing Broker of Lynn Realty in Houston. Thank you so much for joining me again for Smarter Real Estate Weekly on Wednesdays. Another episode in our exciting journey, Building My Dream Home. This series, of course, about our home building process. You've probably seen in the past, if you've been watching uh, videos about the um, lot purchase the pre-planning of you know, getting um, all the survey and elevation certificate, et cetera, ready for the lot. And then the initial elevations uh, showing the exterior of the house that we've drawn out and also the plot plan, how the house will sit on the lot. And then of course, last time, the first floor plan. Well, today we are going to dive into the second floor. So very exciting for you to see the rest of the house, sort of the other half, so to speak. Um, and I'll show you an early sketch and then plus where we are now, which is basically finalized. Uh, and so we'll be walking you through our thought processes. You'll be able to learn a lot if you are looking to build your own home, whether from scratch or semi-custom, or um, if you're buying a home and you just kind of need some ideas for what to look for and what would be a good layout and some of those other elements. Now, today's video will be more of an overview. And then in a future video, I'll go into more details in each room, looking at the electrical, the um, air ducts, the doors and windows and the built-ins and you know the closet rods, literally every detail and how we thought through those because those are very important as well uh, when you're building a new home and then also when you're considering buying in terms of what to look for. Uh, and so this series, of course, is part of my Smarter Real Estate uh, show and it is taking you along on some of my real estate adventures and also arming you with practical strategies to be a smarter seller, buyer, tenant, or landlord. Okay. I do want to just kind of make a statement that a lot of people say when you go into building a home, unfortunately, a lot of couples end up in divorce afterward because it's such a stressful, involved process that can create conflict uh, between the spouses in terms of, you know, who wants what and what's important to the, you know, each other and money arguments and those sorts of things. But I'm happy to say that we have celebrated our 14th wedding anniversary, 20 years of knowing each other, my husband and I. And so we haven't gotten divorced yet. And <laughs> we've made it through the entire floor plan design, which is really the hard stuff. And from here on out, it's about getting the permit and the approvals to actually break ground and start building and going through all of that. And then selections. So we've already made some selections, early selections. And the reason is that, um, you know, in order to determine a more accurate price, especially with prices fluctuating so much these days, it was really necessary for us to go ahead and look at some of the big ticket items like appliances um, and then just, um, you know, how much lighting would we need and how much electrical, any extra outlets, special outlets, um, things like that. And then um, also looking at what did I, um, oh, the roof, the type of roof. Um, I was trying to figure out what else we've kind of looked at so far. Um, and also the exterior facade material. Um, those are all kind of big, important, big ticket items and also cabinets. Okay. Um, there are other expensive items too, like specific lighting, um, you know, your countertops, your flooring. We already know the type of flooring we're going to be going for is in line with what the builder's kind of usual um, uh, selections are. And so that's not going to be outside the norm, but appliances can vary so widely. And I'll get into more of that in detail in a future episode. Um, but anyway, uh, luckily my husband and I have very similar tastes when it comes to design style and things. And if one person feels not so strongly about something, but the other feel, person feels more strongly, then we just defer to the other person who feels more strongly. And depending on what it is, it could be either of us. And so we're pretty satisfied on um, uh, with our decisions in that regard. So Ooh, we got lucky in that department. Okay, all right, I'm gonna do a screen share so that you can see my um, PDF, my desktop here. Okay, so you've seen this image before if you've watched a previous um, episode. I'm gonna also do a little adjusting here. This is the front elevation of the home. So, Let's see. All right, so basically you can see that when we went through the first floor, obviously we talked about this floor here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the second floor of the home. As I scroll down, this is a sketch that my husband did um, early on of our uh, second floor. This is in general, um, sort of where things are laid out, but some things we did tweak. For example, this bedroom here, we flipped the bedroom in the closet, change the shape of it. Um, so that's a bit different. We, let's see, 
uh, a lot of this is somewhat similar um, by the time we got to the sketching phase because we had already gone through a few versions of the floor plan by the time we got here. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual second floor plan. Okay, let me get this the right size. All right, so here it is, very exciting. Um, we'll start at the stairs because that's how you get up to the second floor. Okay, um, so here it says open to below because we have a two story foyer. This would be uh, downstairs would be the front door around this area and then entering here. And so here, as you come up the stairs, you empty out into this upstairs kind of landing area slash hallway. So you've got a pretty wide, long hall here, but it feels quite open because you've got this open area leading into the game room and just kind of wider corridor. So it's not a narrow hall. Um, the game room ended up in the corner, which is interesting because a lot of game rooms, especially in um, kind of traditional older homes, homes that you know have been built in the last um, 20 to 40 years, tend to be in the middle of the upper floor. So you would go up the stairs and immediately the game room is right there in the center and then you've got bedrooms flanking on you know either side but in our case we tried that we tried putting the game room where the master bedroom is um which is now supposed to be referred to as the primary bedroom or we'll call it the owner's uh, suite and we tried putting it there and then flipping the owner's suite along the right side of the home over here where you see my mouse and kind of moving and shifting everything all around like that but it just didn't work out so well we ended up with more cons than pros with that version um certain spaces were a little bit awkwardly shaped um, sizes weren't quite right so we ended up going back to this which is actually the way that the builder originally drew it kind of as an initial suggested layout and so we have the game room here it's actually up to a 12 foot ceiling 10 feet you know in most of the house um so 12 feet is going to be very high it's going to feel very nice and open and the exciting thing is the game room is where i will get to reclaim my exercise space so i in our current home which is a semi-custom home we actually have a game room that is supposed to be my ballet room exercise room and it was for several years the first several years that we lived in the home until our son was born and then he has taken over or i should say i guess we let him take over and is using that as his playroom so i really don't have any space to exercise i have basically kind of the hall area right outside the game room that i'm relegated to so i can't really do any big movements that move across the floor, like, you know, ballet, for example, that requires leaping and, you know, jumping and spinning and things like that, just dancing across the floor. So no, I have to do like, you know, aerobics and things where you can just go left to right and <laughs> walk slightly forward, slightly back. So it's kind of sad and it has hindered my, um, you know, ability to just kind of keep up with, you know, the dancing and different exercises. So I'm really excited because this game room, the primary purpose will be to have a nice open space for exercise. So whether it be ballet, whether it be me watching um, one of my favorite YouTube um, aerobics videos, I can do that. Um, and also we'll have a music corner here. So we'll have our musical instruments and that'll be a nice place. And then we can also um, repurpose the space whenever we want to, to make it a movie room. So like a media room. And so my husband's gonna be in charge of working those technological logistics out. Um, but essentially we'll be able to roll out a rug is the plan for some more you know kind of sound um, softening so it's not so echoey because this is going to have a wood floor which is obviously ideal for dancing um, and then we'll have you know the screen or the big tv um, and then have the sound system the speakers and then be able to have it be a movie room but other times you know we'll just watch movies in our living room downstairs it doesn't need to be a big production um, okay and so coming out to the hall again this is going to be the av closet uh, right near the game room which makes it convenient and then this is going to be a large storage closet. So we're going to have um, a rod, but then shelves. So built-in shelves will allow us to store a lot of different things. Um, not sure exactly, you know, what we're going to store in every single closet, though uh, I do have a list because I'm very OCD of where I intend to put things in our current home into uh, this new home. So I do already have uh, the plan laid out, but I just don't necessarily have every single item because in the new home, we're going to have so much more closet space. So really, uh, there's going to actually be empty space. Amazing. <laughs> it's not going to be so crowded in the closets as our current home is. 
Okay, so walking into the utility room here is basically the laundry. So um, got the washer and the dryer side by side. And then I'm very excited because right now we don't have a sink in our laundry room. It's just not big enough. Um, and so we're gonna have that plus a countertop so we can fold clothes. There's gonna be a rod over the washer or dryer so we can hang clothes up there to dry and say, for example, open the washer lid and let clothes drip into the washer. And um, let's take a look over here. This is gonna be our intended guest suite. So if you ever come and stay over at our house, uh, you'll walk through these double doors into the guest suite. So if anybody is visiting and just like hanging out with us upstairs in the game room, for example, and they need to use the restroom without having to go back downstairs to use the powder, they can come into the guest bedroom, uh, the guest suite rather. And so what this does is allow them to go use the restroom without having to disturb and come into the guest's actual bedroom. So if the guest happens to be in there and wants privacy, they can lock the single door here. Uh, but they can also come out obviously and use this bathroom. And if they wanna lock these double doors and have privacy, for example, at night, uh, or just when they don't feel like having the day visitors come in and use a restroom, you know, the overnight visitors can do that. So you've got the bathroom here with the sink. Uh, we decided to make this shower only. So instead of a tub shower, we thought at least just one bedroom in the home should have a shower with no tub. Uh, it's good for um, older people, people with mobility issues uh, who may have a hard time stepping in and out of the shower. And so we thought for resale, that's a good idea as well, um, because, you know, our population is aging, of course, there's a lot of baby boomers um, and who, if they buy this home, you know, they'll have a little bit of an easier time. Though we still have stairs, you know, but I guess you can install a chairlift. Um, okay, so this is bedroom two. Uh, the drafter has drawn uh, like a bed and a nightstand and a dresser or chest basically to kind of show where things could be placed, but we don't have to necessarily place them in, in that exact manner. Okay, here is a fun feature linking bedroom two and bedroom three. So actually my husband, I give the credit to, came up with this. He just wanted something fun and quirky. And I usually like to have something, at least one or two things in the home that are just a little bit quirky that you don't necessarily find in a typical home that are a little bit of a surprise. Not so weird where people are like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. But just something where it's just a little quirky, a little special because we don't like cookie cutter. And so he came up with this. Uh, it says hall. It is a hall between these two bedrooms, but really it's like a balcony because you're going to have a guardrail here to be able to overlook the foyer downstairs and also look across to the game room and that guardrail, um, which is, you know, the, the handrail um, and then your, you know, your balusters for the stairs, like the iron, the iron railing. And so you can look straight through there to the game room too and, and see people. And he thought this would be fun because this, um, is gonna be Shay's suite. He has a two bedroom suite. Um, seriously, we're not trying to spoil him, but just, you know, we have the space in this house. So um, I'll explain what each room is gonna be used for. But anyway, this would have been fun, uh, would be fun, um, I should say. My husband thinks when um, we have a sleepover guest, for example, if he has a little friend, whether a kid his age or um, just you know a relative, an adult or whatever, so that they can just come out onto this balcony, this landing and meet each other and just have a little fun. Um, eventually we'd like to start getting pets again. And so um, if we have a hamster, they can kind of play in here, but we have to figure out this guardrail situation because if it is, um, you know, the balusters, then of course a small animal like that could run off and then that would be a really, really bad situation. So we might do some sort of glass where it's completely solid, where there is no danger of that. So we'll see. Um, but basically depending on what we have there, um, you know, the purpose and the use of that area uh, will be determined. Okay, so over here, uh, we'll come back up here to this hallway. So here it leads into uh, Shay's suite and we'll save the, the owner's suite for last. So this door comes into bedroom four, which is actually intended to be his bedroom. And then he's got a nice big walk-in closet with rods and built-ins. And then this bathroom we have here um, is linking these two rooms. So this is sort of a Jack and Jill bath, um, sort of a Hollywood bath in essence. It's kind of a, you know, a cross between the two. Typically the Jack and Jill bath, you have the sink for one bedroom and the sink for the other bedroom. And there's a door closing off each one. So that way person in bedroom four can use the sink with privacy and there's a door closed so that the person in bedroom three cannot see person in bedroom four and vice versa. But we um, didn't want to add extra doors. We just thought there would be too many doors and just a small you know, space. So we just thought it would be nicer to do it this way. And of course, you know, in the future, 
if we sell the home, somebody else can install doors if they want to section it off that much. Um, they could also even take away these doors and um, my keyboard connection just got lost, but no big deal. Um, so they could also uh, take away these doors and sheetrock them off if they wanted to, um, to make a more traditional Jack and Jill bath. But I've never really liked the Jack and Jill bath style where the sink is like literally in the bedroom, especially when there's carpet. I mean, I guess, you know, the tile could be just at the sink, but it's just, to me, it's weird to have a sink in the bedroom, even if it's you know off to the side near the bathroom. So anyway, this distinctly sec uh, sections it off to where this is the bathroom. So you come in the door from either side, each person has their own sink, which is convenient. And then there's a shared toilet and tub slash shower. Uh, and so whoever's in here, there are people could still be getting ready out here at the sinks. You know, for Shay, it's mainly just gonna be one sink that he's using, but if we have guests stay over, um, you know, because the guest has just the one sink, you know, if they have more people and it's convenient, they could actually come over and use the sink, no problem. Okay, and then this door leads into what we are calling Shay's playroom. So this way he doesn't have to take over the game room, which is where I need to do my exercise. So he can have his toys, his train set and train tracks, you know, just lay everything out. Um, maybe we'll put bookshelf in there. Maybe we'll put the bookshelf in his room. Haven't um, decided that for sure just yet. And we've got this linen closet, which actually uh, most likely will not be storing linens, but so much as um, some of his toys and, you know, games and um, which is whatever other items, you know, we need to put in there that are not going to be uh, on shelves that are in the room itself. So that's going to be a really fun wing of the house that he will have. And it'll be right across from the owner's suite, which is our uh, bedroom for my husband and me. So this is also a high ceiling. It vaults up from uh, 10 to 12 feet. And, um, you know, this is kind of, again, um, drafter suggested layout of the furniture. And then we've got French doors going into the master bath or the owner's bath. And there's a, um, in this case, it's his and her sinks. Of course, you know, for some families, it's hers and hers or his and his or whatever combination. Uh, but for here, it's going to be socket sink and then my sink. Uh, and then me space is what this KS is for, which is basically the vanity where the ladies put their makeup on. There's a little bit of space underneath. You can put a makeup stool, put your legs as you're sitting on it. Um, this is the bathtub. And the reason why there's a red line there is I don't think we're going to actually go with this particular brand of bathtub. Um, and then there's a built-in linen here, which is basically going to be cabinets. And um, in the future, um, in a future video, I'll go through all the, the cabinet details too. So you can see, you know, all the drawers and cabinets and where those are, because you can't really see them in this kind of above uh, looking down on the house uh, kind of view, which is what this plan is. Okay, then here is a tiled shower with a shower seat. Um, and then here you've got this little alcove, which is nice, that kind of separates the water closet, you know, toilet, funky smells admitted by my husband, <laughs> um, separates that from the rest of the bathroom. So here are built-in cabinets. They're gonna be from floor to almost ceiling. And then of course, linen cabinets above the toilet and the water closet. And finally, we have the walk-in closet. So another set of French doors going in, very large closet. This is all like rod space, some built-in shelves a chest that's built in is gonna have drawers um, and, and possibly actually drawers um, on the bottom and then shelves on top. Uh, and then of course, more rod space over here, uh, all the way around. So gonna be a, a lot more closet space than we currently have, even though we do have quite a good amount of closet space. Um, but so this will be very nice so that my clothes don't have to be just packed in and getting wrinkled as they're hanging there. <laughs> they can actually breathe a little bit. So very exciting stuff. Um, that brings us to the end of the second floor plan. So I'll go ahead and just zoom it out as I close out. Uh, this home is going to be around 4,500 square feet, which gives you an idea. The whole second floor um, space is utilized. And, um, you know, you want to go back and watch previous videos to see um, the initial um, information and, and floor plans of the rest of the house. So thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen share just so that my face can be bigger so you can stare at it. No, it was just, uh, just to say goodbye. <laughs> Um, I've got two monitors here, so that's why I was looking off to the side. Uh, so yes, thank you so much for watching Smarter Real Estate Weekly on Wednesdays. I hope you will join me again every Wednesday. Uh, I usually just take off for holidays or if I get into a really busy season and I didn't have time to record any content. Otherwise, um, I'll be here and look forward to seeing more videos uh, of building my dream home. Thanks so much for watching once again and have a great week.